Well, I, I will be very short, at least I will try to be, because I'm only adding to the holistic basket. <laughs> but before adding to the holistic basket, let, let me pick up on your, on, on your last thought. The European Union is not necessarily as appealing as it used to be, probably, and for, for many layers of society and for, for, certain, for certain countries. We see it uh, here and there uh, throughout all the map of the European continent. So my, my initially announced topic was the European ju Europe's Justice Deaths. This is, this is a book which I edited together with Growing the Book and Andrew Williams. But I will not speak about the, the book because the book is about the EU as a potential creator of injustice. And, uh, and I think our topic today is, is interesting enough, important enough, and uh, sufficiently different from what I wanted to speak about, not knowing uh, the, the, the topics of other speakers, uh, in order to focus on something else. So I want to speak about the article for the stupid. And this is something that, uh, that, that nobody has probably mentioned seriously. That's the use of Article 259. In order, to, in order to enforce the deficiencies in, in some countries' view or, or like going about Article 2. And this is something that we spoke about with Kim a lot, because in fact, what I want to do is to build on her proposal, but to, to, uh, to plea for a different possibility to trigger it. Because uh, what, what, I, what, what I want to propose is to allow any member state, basically, for Article 259 by, uh, by using this uh, holistic basket of infringements approach that to bring those whom they dislike for good reasons directly to the Court of Justice. Like this, we don't depend on the Commission, we don't depend on, on common consensus, which, which is applied in Article 7, and we also put the Court in the spotlight. The Court will, will, will have to tell us what the court actually thinks about overwhelming cases of Article 2 violations. <laughs> so, of course, it's like throwing things upstairs, but sometimes seeing our highest court in a difficult situation is, 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 the, is the biggest pleasure uh, for a lawyer. So let's, <laughs> so let's go through it uh, point by point. Where, where does the inspiration come from? The inspiration comes from the Council of Europe, of course. We, the, Initially, before before private parties would go to the court to, to the court in Strasbourg, uh, states would sue states. And if you look, there are not so many cases. If you look at the cases brought and the cases won, they are very telling, and they come at telling moments. So we have two cases against Greece in 1967. You know the year: it's Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and the Netherlands against Greece. Not France against Greece. Not UK against Greece. Then, then we have we have cases against Turkey. It's 1982. We have again Denmark, here France, Norway, Sweden, and the Netherlands against Turkey. There is a, there is an activist group of states. Then we have Georgia <laughs> versus Russian Federation, and last year we have Ukraine versus Russian Federation. This is more or less pretty much the whole list. So that system works works through direct actions as much as or allowing the states as much standing as it would allow standing. Uh, to private parties. Then, what, what is the crucial difference between them and what we have in the EU? In the EU, self-help is prohibited. So, so the EU uh, is what we're told by all the case books, by all the, by, by the textbooks, that the EU is not international law. So uh, reciprocity is not one of the principles. If you are constantly wronged by your good friend, or someone who calls him or herself a good friend, then you cannot, you cannot slap back, you cannot block funds, you cannot do anything. You need to go to the single arbiter, that is the court, and usually, in fact, you need to ask, you need to ask the commission. Self-help is prohibited to such an extent that, in fact, you cannot even check as a state whether other states are okay in terms of European law and in terms of, the, in terms of ECHR law. So in fact, I would suspect under the current case law of the, European Court, uh, of the European Court of Justice, it might actually be legal in many cases to use a direct action between, between the two states of the European Union under the ECHR system, which is, which is of course a very bizarre, uh, a very bizarre conclusion, you might say. But I, 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 I see it coming from, for instance, uh, very telling par paragraph 352 of the, of the recent uh, decision 213 of the Court of Justice, where the Court of Justice tells us the member states may be obliged to, 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 to put full trust in, in, into what, what their peers are doing without ever checking, and may be obliged not to check. 
So we know something is going wrong with Greece in, in, in terms of uh, how the housing of asylum seekers, or the, general, the general treatment of asylum seekers. We cannot check unless the situation is, is uh, that of extreme. And, and, and even in extreme situations, very often the Court of Justice will still uh, disagree with the idea of self-help, which means non-application of the, of the standard European procedures by other member states. So the member states find themselves in what Carlos described so, so wonderfully, they find themselves bound to each other, but the system which, which actually created the binds makes it absolutely impossible for them to defend themselves. And then let's look at how does the Union defend the member states then who are so vulnerable and who find themselves in such a, in such a pitiful situation in the end. And the answer is the EU doesn't. Because, because the EU acts like Commission versus Hungary, uh, the, please, please, please give uh, retirement bonuses to these judges. The EU acts like Commission versus Hungary too. Please reinstall the data protection supervisor, but the, the place is already filled. Uh, that, that we're sorry, you were wrong, uh, now that there is a new guy, it's okay. So the EU is always late, is, the EU is, is always enough, and at the same time the EU prohibits the member states from defending themselves. Of course if the member states are outraged, the nuclear option is always there. Let's, uh, let's applaud the nuclear option, but the likelihood of it solving the problems is actually very low. So why don't we combine this practice of state against state litigation which we, find in the, which we find in the ECHR, using Article 259, which is already in the treaties, and which is, uh, uh, which is worded in a sufficiently broad way. It's a member state which considers uh, that another member state has failed to fulfill an obligation under the treaties, may bring the matter before the Court of Justice. Uh, so you can, you can read many things into that. Of course we know how the article is used. And here I, here I come to my title. It's, it's basically the mechanism for the stupid. Why? Because, uh, because all the cases we have under 259 are the, are the, they are either outright stupid cases, like pitiful cases where the member states pretend that they don't know the law, or the cases brought by the member states who actually don't know the law. So uh, the, I, I give two great examples. The, the, the first example is, uh, is a recent case of uh, Spain versus UK. Spain pretended that it hasn't noticed that Gibraltar was under the UK sovereignty, so it contested <laughs> some UK, UK legislation in, in, in terms of uh, the, the rules uh, concerning who will vote in European Parliament elections from Gibraltar in UK elections. So Spain versus UK, who loses in this case? So of course the, the state that initiates, because that's the stupid provision. Then uh, another case involves Hungary, a great, a great example as well. Hungary versus Slovakia on the, on the Hungarian national day, the Trianon day, the, the Slovaks don't allow the president uh, who is there to make, uh, to make a, a rather intolerant speech, presumably, cross the bridge uh, from, from Hungary to Slovakia. And then Slovaks activate this article arguing that it's, it's a European citizen exercising his free movement rights, the head of state. So obviously the court says, you don't understand the national law, you don't understand the European law, unfortunately you, don't, you basically don't have a case. All the cases are like this. Why? It's, 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 it's also easy to explain why, because the commission has to jump, to, to jump in, and this is part of the, of the procedure under the 59. And under the 59 you bring the case as a state, and then if commission agrees with your allegation, uh, the commission, the commission can, take the, uh, can take the case over. Has it, or should it be the procedure for the stupid all the time? Probably not. So if the commission doesn't have the, doesn't have the capacity, doesn't have the, doesn't have the political will, doesn't have the power, the, the resources to bring it to 59 action under what Kim has proposed, why can't Finland or Portugal or the Netherlands or this, the, these countries which, which have traditionally stood on the side of, 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 of freedom and liberal democracy, that to, which, uh, to which the ECHR case law testifies, bring a case by themselves. It's much easier to find political will in Finland than finding political will, presumably, at the level of the commission to invent something new, not to go after the, after the retirement bon bonuses. Or to find political will at the level of the, uh, at the, level of the council, the European council. So, in fact, this, this will be a much, more, a much more useful procedure. Does the commission have to jump in then well, the, 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 it's up to the commission. So it's, it's a procedure to, for the stupid, but 
the, the commission will consider some smart, uh, some smart states, uh, stupid states as well, necessarily. So, in fact, uh, well, there is a possibility that there will be, for instance, Finland versus, versus Hungary, where commission doesn't say a word, which the court would actually accept as a, as a suitable, viable, and doable case uh, under, under the accumulation of infringements. Because the article is broadly worded, because nobody has tried it, and, and, and because, uh, because there is clearly a potential for this. So it's just throwing into the basket. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Great.